I want to welcome Agile XRM to the podcast. I've known the people at Agile XRM for the past 12 years. I've seen how their business process management tool can add massive value to complex organizational processes in sectors such as finance and government. If you have complex processes or a need for dialogues on the Power Platform or Dynamics 365, take a look at how this BPM tool can add value. You can find them at agilexrm.com or check out the show notes for more details. Welcome to the MVP Show. My intention is that you listen to the stories of these MVP guests and are inspired to become an MVP and bring value to the world through your skills. If you have not checked it out already, I do a YouTube series called How to Become an MVP. The link is in the show notes. With that, let's get on with the show. Today's guest is from Malta. She works at KPMG as a Microsoft Dynamics 365 developer. She was first awarded her MVP in 2023. Her words, she's just a girl in love with tech who loves baking and reading novels. She's self-driven and passionate about learning and dedicated to building tech communities. You can find links to her bio, socials, etc. in the show notes for this episode. Welcome to the show, Rachel. Yeah, thank you so much, Mark. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, thank you. I'm 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 really happy to have you uh, on the show. You're you're a star in the community, so it'll be good to unpack your journey and and what you've been up to. Before we go there, tell me about food, family, and fun. Um, what do they mean to you? Okay, I okay. I think I can start from fun first. Fun. I don't do much. <laughs> I don't do much for fun. I love reading novels to relax. Then I love watching funny movies just to laugh and yeah, just to relax. And then for family, I love my mom a lot. I recently lost my dad. That was in 2022. Yeah, I lost my dad in 2022. So yeah, so I just have my mom. So I have two brothers and one sister. Yeah. Nice. And where did you originate from before Malta? I'm from Nigeria. Nice. And, and is it far for you to travel then? Like if you need to go home, is it because I've been to Malta? Um, I stayed for a week, my wife and I, and so I and I know where your office is because I saw it while I was while I was uh, in Malta. But tell me, how how hard is it to get from Malta to Nigeria across the mid? Okay, it's not a straight flight, so I'll either have to travel to Turkey. Then from Turkey to Nigeria, that's to Lagos, or I'll have to travel to London, either Luton Airport, and then travel to to Lagos, Nigeria. So there's a direct flight from Luton to Nigeria? Yeah, I think I saw, I traveled recently, and I saw a board where Nigeria was written, like Lagos, Nigeria was there. And I was like, okay, wow, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When I lived in London, um, Luton was our main airport, so I did lots of trips out of that airport as well. Um, how, how long have you been in Malta? I've been in Malta now for a year and one month. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Do you love it? It's nice. It's small, but it's nice. <laughs> it's definitely small, right? Yeah, it's small. Yeah. Have you traveled much around the islands? I I don't really go out much. I just mostly just go out for work or maybe hanging out with colleagues. Yeah, so I don't really go out much, but I do travel around Europe. Yeah, I travel around Europe. Yeah. Nice. Nice. There's just so much to see and do, right? As an um uh and and I particularly what I love about Malta is its history, incredible history. It's been pivotal in so many things and the town is beautiful and then there's those there's like castles and stuff up on the hills outside of Malta, right? Yeah, that's Valletta. It's beautiful. And where I live, I have like a view of the sea. So it's really, really beautiful. Yeah. So it's amazing. How did you get into tech? What was your journey to getting into technology? 
Okay, I I say this a lot. I say tech found me, like Power Platform found me, because I was actually trying to be independent, like not to reach out to my parents all the time when I needed money or needed to get something. So I was trying to be independent. I was trying a lot of things. I was trying. I tried baking. I tried selling, like selling um clothes, stuff like that. I tried um, selling um, baked goods, but every day, every time what stopped me was money to like to continue, like money to continue, like money to actually invest into that business. So I, I was still in school and a friend talked about a like this power platform bootcamp and I was like, okay, let me go. And I went for the bootcamp. I think before then, before that period, I was I was studying industrial mathematics. Industrial mathematics is, is amazing, <laughs> but it was not something I applied for. I applied for engineering and I was giving mathematics. So it was not something I applied for. I did not know what I wanted to do, like what the future had for me, what was my future career or what I wanted to go for. I was just, I was asking lecturers like, okay, what can I do with industrial mathematics? And they were telling me that I can work anywhere. Mm, I can work anywhere, where can I work please? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so uh, it was, so attending the Power Platform Bootcamp, I be, and before then, I actually did not know much about tech careers. Like I know about tech, but I did not know that, okay, there are tech careers and anyone can go into tech, you understand? Because when you say tech, it looks like that, like that big mountain that nobody can cross into. So I got to know about Power Platform and I was building, I, it was a bootcamp for just 10 days. I was using applications. They were giving us assignments. I was building applications, building workflows, chatbots. I built a dashboard, but it was terrible. <laughs> yeah, a dashboard was terrible. So, but it was nice. It was a nice experience. And like coming from a background that I had no idea about careers in tech and being able to do all of that. So I actually fell in love with Power Platform and also the community because during the bootcamp david abu which is a he's a cloud advocate at microsoft he advised us to join the community the power Addict community to post online if we have questions we should post online stuff like that so i fell in love with power platform i fell in love with the community and the community has helped me a lot yeah nice tell me tell me a bit more detail around the bootcamp what was what was involved in the bootcamp? Because because what you just talked about is amazing way for people if they wanted to start a career in Microsoft business applications. So the bootcamp was obviously the turning point for you and massively influential. Over that ten days, kind of what were all the things that you covered? What did you at the end of it? What were you thinking about your next steps? Yeah, okay. For the bootcamp, it was more of a beginner level, like what is a Power Platform, um, stories of where Microsoft Power Platform is being used, and a story about Funyi. You know Funyi? No. She's from Nigeria. And yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I do. Sorry, she, I do. Yeah, yes. Funyi from Nigeria. A story about Funyi on how she came into Power Platform. So it was really encouraging. Then talking about how companies are using Power Platform. Then showing us how to build like three, three screen application. Showing us how to build workflows just to send weathers, like how the weather looks like the next day. And also building chatbots for businesses. And then I think another thing that helped a lot was actually giving us assignments, like something that you can go back home and work on and come back the next day. And also creating a, there's a, we the community has like a, a WhatsApp chat that everybody's in. So when you have questions, you can easily just post your questions there and people can answer your questions. So it was amazing. Like everybody was free. You, there was no that when you have questions, there is no that feeling that this question you have is silly. You understand? So yeah, so it was really, really amazing. If you're looking for a structured way to enhance your career in Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform, this is for you. Enrollment for the 90-day mentoring challenge April to June cohort are now open. 
I discovered MSCRM in 2003 and it changed the course of my life. My career in Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform has taken me all over the world and the opportunities for people to build a career in the space today are better than ever. The 90 Day Mentoring Challenge will help you chart a path to capitalize on these opportunities and build the skills for greatness. Find out more at ako.nz365guy.com. For the first time, I'm limiting space on this cohort for a more intimate experience. So if you want to be part of it, don't wait. Enrollment will close on the 25th of March. Podcast listeners can use the code PODCAST for a 10% discount at checkout. I'm, uh, I'm in one of the WhatsApp communities for Nigeria. I'm in the Nigeria Dynamics 365 UG WhatsApp group. Yeah. And uh, I've been in that group for whew, how many members? There's 372 members in there, and I think I've been in that. Uh, do you know Hamad? Yes, I know Hamad. He set it up. Yeah, I yeah. know Hamad. Yeah. So I think he set it up. Um, uh, boy, this was before I left from London, so this is like four or five years ago. Um, so it's it's been very good. I always say I love seeing how the Nigeria community has in the last five years just exploded um, globally, right? And, uh, and and you're a testament to that. Tell me about the the boot camp ended. What happened next? How did what did you do next? How did your career start to develop? Okay, after the boot camp, I think I had like a, I did not. I got to a point that I had no idea what was the next step. I had no idea what the next step was. After the boot camp, I got to I took Power Platform Fundamental Certification exam because we're en- we're encouraged to take the exam. So I took the exam, and I had no idea what was the next step. Like, what is the next thing for me to do right now? I was seeing so many people around me because I finally came to Twitter. I was not using Twitter before then, but I finally came to Twitter and I was using Twitter. I was seeing so many persons around me. They were all in data, like they were data analysts. Data is awesome, definitely. It's awesome, but it's not something for me because uh, I was seeing so many people in data and I also wanted to, okay, let me venture into that particular field because I'm seeing so many people in data. I was already seeing people in Power Platform in Nigeria because this was 2022, early 2022. I was not really seeing much people in Power Platform. I was like, okay, since I'm seeing so many people in data, let me go into data. And I started learning Python. I started learning Python. But I I think uh, I was just, I was doing the 100 days of code, 100 days of Python. And I was also doing school alongside. I was going ninth class back to back. Ninth class is like something you have to spend the whole night in school, reading. After ninth class, I go home. I go back again to school. So it was stressful. Uh, yeah, so it was really stressful. So I was learning Python. I was like, okay, this thing I'm learning, I'm not really gaining anything from this. I'm just posting online. I'm doing hundreds of code. But what, what am I learning? <laughs> so I was like, okay, no. I If it was now, I think I would have taken the course and also um, checked on other resources online to learn about Python, but then I was doing it differently. So I stopped Python and I was like, okay, I reached out to April Dona. I reached out to Azure, reached out to Foyin, reached out to Mary Myers. And I was like, because I saw them, they were in Power Platform. I reached out to them. I was like, okay, I I noticed that you're in Power Platform and I want to know how your day to day looks like. I'm not a person who likes Power BI bots because I'm not good with dashboards, but I love Power Apps. <laughs> I love Power Apps and Power Automate. So I, I would love to know how your day-to-day looks like. Like, how do you do? What do you do at your work? I'm very, very curious about it. And they were like, okay, fine, definitely. Okay, I was okay. So if I have this question, I think a lot of persons too, we have this particular question. So I started doing a Twitter space where I invited them, they spoke, a lot of persons joined the call. They spoke about their their journey. They spoke about what they do, their day-to-day. I was like, oh, wow, okay, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, this is really nice. So I was like, okay. And I started Twitter spaces every time. I was inviting people in the community to talk about how to get started, what is their personal experiences like. And from the Twitter spaces, that's where I had the idea where I created a podcast named A Girl in Love with Tech. Yeah. So uh, apart from that also, because I was trying to navigate my way in all of this, I was trying to navigate my way and also to learn. 
and also to learn. So the boot camp, before the Twitter space, the boot camp I attended, I reached out to David Abu and I told him that, okay, I would love to be a part of the persons actually organizing this boot camp. Because, yeah, because when I was learning, I noticed a lot of things that I, I had, like, I did not really have so much strength in. I'm not a confident person. Uh, I'm not really good with communicating clearly. I have anxiety. Like, when you call my name, it's like the world wants to fall on my head. <laughs> yeah, so, like, okay, so why just cry and say, okay, I have these weaknesses. Why not work on them? So and also I was noticing that my journey is slow and I was making I was not really knowing what to do. So I reached out to him and told him that okay, I would like to be a part of the team organizing this boot camp to help out and also to tutor. And then what I knew there was just how to build a three screen view power apps application. Yeah. And also what the different applications in Power Platform do. So I reached out to him and he said, okay, fine, that I can join the community. So from there, we started organizing the boot camps and I started tutoring in the boot camp. So all of this helped me a lot in my journey after the boot camp. And also I reached out to two persons in the Nigerian Power Platform community. I was like, okay, I know there are a lot of persons out there and they are interested in Power Platform because through that Twitter spaces, I, I was seeing a lot of persons asking questions about Power Platform. I know they are interested in Power Platform. I would love to hold, I, I don't have so much knowledge about, this was in 2022. I don't have so much knowledge about Power Platform, but I would love it if you could join me to organize a weekend classes, like weekend classes every Saturday so that people can attend. So we created a Telegram group and also we started having and classes every weekend. Yeah, and I joined the Nigerian Power Platform Leadership Group. That is, that is, that's such a good, and I, you said you, it felt slow to you, but for me, it's like you covered a lot in about two years, right? In two years, you, you, you really, how did you end up then getting a job at KPMG? Okay, I was posting a, a lot online. I, because from the boot camp, David Abu told us that we should try learning. We should post online about our learning journey. Like, yes. if I learned something today. David's a smart guy. Yeah. David's a smart yeah, guy. I, I totally agree with him. Yeah. So if I completed the learning part today, I'll post it online. This is what I learned from this learning part. If maybe I had a, if I have a question, I'll just use the power edit hashtag and post it online. And I was also speaking at different events. I was speaking at different events, different user groups, visually though. I was speaking at different events. So on LinkedIn, I was also, I was posting this on Twitter and I was posting this on, on LinkedIn. Like my LinkedIn is full on my Twitter. <laughs> you can see a lot of posts there. So on LinkedIn, somebody reached out to me. That was, um, I think 2020, that was like four months, five months into my journey, into my Power Platform journey. Somebody reached out to me on LinkedIn and told me that, okay, um, the person just sent me a connection and I accepted like on LinkedIn and the person sent me a message. That was the first time I spoke to him and I was like, Rachel, hi, have you applied for this job? I was like, no, I've not applied for this job. It's like, okay, send me your CV so that I can, I can be a reference for you. Like I can do a referral for you. Yeah. And that was it. And you got the job. Yeah. I went for the interview I went for the interview, it took like a month. I went for the interview and then I got the job. Wow. And so that that's still another big thing, right? Because you actually had to move countries for that job. Is that right? Yes, I did. Yeah. How did, how did that feel? It's amazing. I, I still can't believe it. <laughs> I, I think it took me a long time to actually, when I was staying in Nigeria, I was actually still running around to relocate to Malta. I could not believe it that I was actually like my skills is making this happen. Yeah. So it's unbelievable. This is amazing. Yeah. Um, I want to make sure we get links to your podcast and social media, those type of things in the show notes for this episode. And I recommend everyone go check it out because this is an amazing story. Tell me, how did you become an MVP? My contributions to the community, I do a lot in the community. I have, um, like I said, I have a podcast. I also have, my podcast is everywhere. It's on Spotify, it's on YouTube, it's on Google Podcast, it's on um, Anchor, it's on LinkedIn, Twitter, because it's live, live podcast. So you get to listen to it live and also ask questions. And then I have a YouTube channel where I post tutorial videos. I speak at different events. 
And I also travel to volunteer at events. And then I, I contribute to the telecommunity blog posts where I actually contribute on blog posts. I contribute to the student ambassador community. Yeah, because I became a student ambassador last year. And also I um I do a lot. I can't even count them. <laughs> I'm also part of different communities where I'm volunteering. I'm part of communities where I'm volunteering. I also have um I host events where I host host classes to talk about Power Platform, talk about Power Automate. And yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. So it's nice to be recognized. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's so, so, so good to uh, to see you in the community and all the, you know, contributions uh, that you make. If someone came to you and let's say they're still at school and they're going, what should I do for a career and and what steps should I take to to get into a career like what they see you doing, Rachel, what would you recommend they do? Okay, I think it depends on what the question they ask. I, I recently spoke to someone recently and she wants to be a data analyst. She wants to be a data analyst and she was thinking of also coming into Power Platform. So I said there's one thing that you need to do. You don't have to overwhelm yourself. You need to decide first what do you want to go for. You don't have to, because there are a lot of things out there. When people are looking for careers to join, the first question they ask is, is there money in this? <laughs> yeah. They ask you, is there money in this? Are there opportunities in this? I'm hearing a lot of persons saying this is the role trending right now and I want to jump into it. What do you think? So I think you have to decide what you want to do first. You have to decide and you have to take it one step at a time. You don't have to overwhelm yourself. Like we have Power Platform right now. We have so many applications in Power Platform. So when you're trying to jump into Power Platform, I'll say, okay, why not go for Power Apps first or Power Automate? And I think one thing I've noticed is that when you're using Power Automate, when you're using Power Apps, because at first what I wanted to learn was Power Apps. And while learning Power Apps, I noticed that most times I had to use Power Automate. So I had to learn Power Automate also. So something like that, you just have to take it one step at a time. You don't need to overwhelm yourself because you are going to get burnt out. And one other advice I will give is join the community. It's very important. It's going to take you a long way. Have people around you that support you, people that advise you, and try to listen to people. Nobody's know it all. <laughs> Yeah, try to listen to people. When people talk to you, they reach out to you that, okay, this thing you are doing is not right. Can you try to listen to people? And also, I think try to build projects. I think the best way to learn is that it's not just learning, reading, learning parts, going through courses, doing 100 courses in a year. I think just build along, learn along and build. And I think one thing that has helped me a lot is teaching, teaching what I have learned, building learning and teaching because it's like um it's meant that knowledge <laughs> yeah because when you are going to when you are going to speak in an event or when you are trying to teach in a group of with group of people you have to do a bit of research like things you had no idea about because you are going to try and get prepared for questions that will be asked during that class or during the class people might ask you questions like recently i spoke at estonia and somebody asked me questions about licensing, <laughs> licensing your power platform. I've always, I've always looked at it as being very hard, but I was like, okay, since somebody asked me this question, why not just look into it? You understand? So stuff like that, it opens you to knowledge. And there's something people miss out a lot. Why working on your technical skills? Why not also work on your soft skills? Soft skills is very important. It's going to take you a long way alongside your technical skills, like skills like speaking, being able to communicate clearly, presentation, being able to present. Because let me say, for instance, if you are a data analyst and you are building a dashboard, you have to explain what you have built. Yeah, and also if you are a data analyst, you also have soft skills that you need to learn. You need to learn design colors, how to use colors, a lot of things. And in Power Platform, I think soft skills that you need to learn speaking clearly, you have to learn documentation, 
how, how to document, which is very important. You have to learn how to, either being a developer or a consultant, I think it's very important to learn how to gather requirements. So there are a lot of things to do that we need to work on. And while learning, like I said, take it a step-by-step -step process. It's not easy. Have people around you. Yeah, I think there are a lot, but I've forgotten. <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening. I'm your host, business application MVP, Mark Smith, otherwise known as the NZ365 guy. If you like the show and want to be a supporter, check out buymeacoffee.com forward slash NZ365 guy. Thanks again and see you next time. Before you go, a quick reminder that the 90 Day Mentoring Challenge kicks off on the 1st of April. Every cohort, I hear people say that surely this group has been the best one ever. The true magic of the 90 Day Mentoring Challenge is the connections formed between a group of people who are committed to learning with and from each other. Will you be part of the best cohort yet? Use the code PODCAST for 10% off at checkout. Visit ako.nz365guy.com to see a detailed curriculum and hear what past participants have to say about the challenge. I can't wait to help you discover the unique value you bring to the community and just how far you can take your career.